hello and welcome to the latest episode of what did i miss today is a special day because it's taken forever and we finally are here and my good friend and the person who i consider to do the most homework of anybody i know in the sports business miss anita marks ladies and gentlemen <sighs> hello how are you Hi, I'm great. I'm great. It's so great to be back on with you. No, I feel like it's been forever. We, we I miss you here in New York. Babe. I mean, I kind of miss you. I, you know what I miss? I miss the food. And I will always miss the food. I tell everyone all the time about the time that I met you for happy hour and you showed up with a notebook this thick and it was for baseball fantasy. And I was like, <laughs> Put that away. We're having we're having wine. Put that away. And I was just like, yep, that's Anita in a nutshell. Also knows nothing about pop culture, although I don't know if you've gotten better at that, but that's fine. Luckily for you. I you absolutely haven't. have not. Okay, I didn't think so. I kind I wanted to make this 30 minutes of pop culture and I was poo-pooed on that because <laughs> they were like, No, that's not no. gonna work. So we get some football. And the good thing is we are we're it's over. Preseason is completely over. Finally. I, I'm going to I'm going to tell you something even though I'm back into the football the preseason doesn't I can't do it. Do you watch every minute of it? Absolutely not. Uh, okay. so because because here's what's happened beads and that is head coaches now value the joint practices yeah. more more than the preseason games. So and a big reason why there's no TVs there. So a lot of times <sighs> coaches they don't they don't implement they're not practicing what they're really going to use yeah. in the regular season because the TVs are there and they're rolling and they don't want to give up uh, mm. any information for the start of the regular season so you know if if the coaches don't value the preseason games why should why we sh yeah right like i remember one was on in the background i was like i don't think you could pay me to to watch this maybe like 6 no. million dollars but i don't know what that and that so that okay that makes a lot more sense and we start things off which i'm excited for the Buffalo Bills at the Los Angeles Rams. I feel like I've adopted a new team every season. I do like Josh Allen. I think he's got the thing. Uh, any predictions for you in week one? And also, thank you, NFL, for a good week one matchup. Yeah, not only a week one matchup, but like the first game of the season. <laughs> yeah, so, like, thank you. Like, could you could you have started with a better game? I don't think so. I, I mean, listen, I love Josh Allen. He's really amazing. Uh, the team is loaded. They're stacked. Their roster is really deep offensively, defensively, special teams, that's another story. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but really the bills go into the season, the team, like it's, it's the Super Bowl is theirs to lose hands down, right? Really? Like, I think so. I, I mean, okay. they're going, they're going in with no disrespect. I'm here in New York, Jets fans, sorry, not sorry, but like, no, we're not Jets will be lucky if they win six games, right? Oh, uh, the oh. Miami Dolphins, I know they went out. They did a lot uh, in, in regard to free agency, bringing in Tyreek Hill. Uh, they, they, they did a good job in the draft, but still, I'm not crazy about the Miami Dolphins. I'm still not a Tua fan. I don't think he's it. I don't think he's the answer at quarterback. Oh, um, I love me some Mac Jones. Like, like I, I started the Mac Jones fan club. Not only am I the president. <laughs> But I started the Mac Jones. So um, I, I, I secretly root for the Patriots now that Tom Brady is not there and it's Mac Jones. But really, the Bills should run away with the division, which means the Super Bowl more than likely, Michelle, is going to go through Buffalo. And you think about teams that are going to have to go to Buffalo at the end of December, January. The worst. Forget about oh, it. So I don't really, know if you've been to Buffalo in the winter, ladies and no. gentlemen. It's it's dark. It's it's cold. It's, it's depressing. Yeah. It is depressing. So I just I think I think the Super Bowl is the Bills to lose. They absolutely should should win it. All right, keep those thoughts because um, we're gonna I'm gonna learn betting again um, later on in the show. <laughs> I say that every time, and I lose all of the information as soon as we're done talking about it. But that's okay. Uh, and you obviously are wearing the shirt for the next topic, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, she is. So he um, asked about facing the Browns week one. Quote. I'm going to fuck them up. That's a perfect I love quote. it. <laughs> I love it. But is he you know, jinxing it? Is he jinxing it? No. Like, oh, but God. you know what I love about it? Michelle, he said what he said what we all would say, right? True. Like, don't let the, the door hit you on the ass on the way out. Oh, by the way, we're going to sign a dude who's got oh, an, a, like a really horrible fetish yes. and, uh, and, and has an issue. Um, I, it's just... And now he goes to a team in Carol <laughs> now he goes to a team in Carolina. I, I love Matt Rule, his head coach. Matt Rule had a cup of coffee here with the Giants, so I know Matt Rule. Really great dude. 
he's coaching for his life. He's coaching for his career to, to advance to next season. So there's that. He brings in Baker Mayfield, much better quarterback than Sam Darnold, wins the job out. They improve the offensive line in free agency and in the draft. I love me some DJ Moore. McCaffrey, hopefully he can be healthy. This well, is going to be big. a very explosive offense. So he's got all this. He's got a new lease on life. And then week one, he's home in Carolina I mean... against the team that kicked him out the door. Are you? So what I love about it is like Baker said what we all would say to each other. Seriously. Maybe, maybe at like a local watering hole, having a <laughs> beer or a glass of wine or you and me on the phone or I'm texting. Mm-hmm. Like he said what we wanted to hear. I love it. But it's he has my to do favorite it. week line, week one line. I talked about it on Daily Wager a few weeks ago and it was at minus one. Now it's up to oh. minus two and a half. Don't be surprised. Like I always say, hashtag run, don't walk. Jump on this. Don't be surprised if this line doesn't go up to three and a half by kickoff on Sunday afternoon. I just worry for him because I, I've never I've never really understood the um, the hate for Baker Mayfield. I, I don't know where that comes from, uh, other than maybe people don't love his like vibes, whatever. But I worry because it is the perfect quote. It's exactly what we want to hear. I think all of us feel for the kid because you didn't get replaced by a good quarterback. You got replaced by a quarterback who happens to be a, a terrible human being. And so that is that has to hurt so much more no matter what he says. So I just worry that saying the words out loud jinxes it, and I don't want that for him. I'm worried. Yeah, I think, I think the... Uh... I think the issues in regard to the fan base or lack thereof for Baker stems <laughs> from like him coming out of college, right? There, there was, there was an arrogance to it. Sure. And, and so sometimes, you know, you got to walk the walk. And unfortunately he did not in Cleveland. Doesn't yeah. mean that he can't, Michelle. Doesn't mean he cannot. This very well could be. And also like, I'm a true believer. Like sometimes we've got to fall down to pick ourselves up to truly appreciate yes. the, the situation that we're in and, and the new lease on life we've been given. And, and like, I'm just, I'm expecting big things from Baker. I, I think, I, I think the road that he has traveled has now presented a situation for him where I think he's all in. I think he's 110% in. So I'm excited for week one. And, and also, and I, and I think they do kick their ass. I hope so. It's another week one matchup to watch which i'm kind of excited about and then we had some headlines um i think a lot of people experts included were a little surprised when the the news came down on the ticker that jimmy g signed an extension and is going to stay in san francisco because it seemed not only were the divorce papers all but signed people had moved into new homes they'd moved on to new partners they were setting up their whole new brand new lives and now he's still there I think the psychological game that's being played with a young Trey Lance head is going to be damaging. Am I looking too far into this? Okay, so let's let's rewind. And based on uh, the um, the information that I have gathered, right? Yeah. So the 49ers knew that there was going to be a quarterback that they coveted that would be available at three. So they they sold the farm to move up and to get into a position where they could draft a quarterback at three. It was my understanding that that quarterback was going to be Mac Jones, right? Oh, Remember, fan yeah. club president here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> as 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 the as the process, you know, so much goes into the general manager and the owner and the coach meeting the player. From what's been communicated to me is that Mac Jones rubbed Kyle Shanahan the wrong way, really? and also what's been communicated to me is that um, Trey Lance is the t- kind of dude who walks in a room. He's big, he's tall, he's an Adonis, he's handsome, he could throw the ball 95 yards with a flick of a wrist, he's uber athletic, and he's uber charming. I was told in the interview process, he wowed everyone. (laughs) So, and I'm told that in the 11th hour, like, they they were going back and forth. Mac Jones, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Trey Lance. In the 11th hour, they went Trey Lance. Scene from Pretty Woman, how about this? For some pop culture scene from Pretty Woman, right? Like she goes into mm-hmm. Rodeo Drive and she pops back into the store and says, I love "Huge that mistake, yeah, huge." Michelle, huge mistake. Oh god. Here's why: there's no denying that Trey Lance is more athletic, can throw the ball further, can run faster, all those things. But there is something special and unique about Mac Jones in regard to the way that he processes football. He makes quick decisions. 
his accuracy, can't throw the ball as far as, as but, Trey Lance, but is more accurate and has right. more experience. Trey Lance comes from North Dakota State, subpar competition, not a lot of football experience. So with that being said, now fast forward to today, I think it's evident he's not ready. Oh, and God. so if Jimmy Garoppolo coming off of shoulder surgery and the 49ers couldn't find what they wanted to get back in regard to trade value for him, why not renegotiate the contract, have him continue to be in the, in, in, in the quarterback room just in case? Because hmm. here's the thing. This 49ers roster is built to go back and win a Super Bowl. Yeah. They are built. For, their defense is top three, top five, right? Like, they've got Debo Samuel, George Kittle. Like, they've got, they, they check a lot of boxes. Now you're telling me you're not going to get there because you're rolling with an inexperienced quarterback? So, yeah, big red flag here. The, the fact that they, the fact that they renegotiated Jimmy. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the quarterback room. How how yeah. how much how quick of a how quick of a leash how quick of a mm -hmm. hook is Trey Lance going to have this season if he's not fitting the bill and helping the sport? Now here's the positive: two for the the first two games for the for the 49ers are you know are not that difficult. What is it? Is it Chicago and Detroit? So, so then, oh, we'll sorry, see Q. what happens when we get into like week five, week six, week seven. What happens then? But you say that, that the first two should be gimmies. I think that's what will make the leash short, is that if it doesn't appear that they are gimmies, then they pull him. And then I think, man, long term, that's, I mean, it, you know, maybe not. Maybe he's got a like a goldfish memory and you just move on. I just, I feel like we're going to see Jimmy G way, way earlier in the season than probably we thought. And good for him. And also, I'd like to thank the 49ers on behalf of all women with eyes we prefer to see Jimmy G <laughs> at some point somewhere. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, it's to me, it's fascinating to watch. I'd love to sort of be in San Francisco for a few weeks and listen to their local radio of, of it over and over again because what a disaster. But from Jimmy G's perspective, it was either take six and a half, whatever million dollars or take zero, which seemed to be what was available on the table. Nobody came a call in, which I also found kind of crazy. So it's it's a... What a weird situation. And I had Trey Lance on, one, on my fantasy football team last year and... I was too early. I peaked too soon. Speaking of, by the way, <laughs> fantasy football. I am finally in a league with you that yes. I plan on completing. It's yes. the ladies only league. You guys are, I, all I know so far is that I feel like Brandy Chastain is terrifying. Am I right in assuming that? She's talking smack already and I don't even know anyone. <laughs> she's, she's awesome. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, if you see that. I mean, you know, besides the iconic shot of her, right, in the sports bra, like, ah, God. Um, this is, so this is your first league, this yep. is for your first year in the league. By the way, I was in the league last year, I went to the championship, and I went up against, and, and I forgot, I apologize, I forgot who was, I, I was up against the championship, or, or I'm sorry, the week before, or maybe oh. the week of the championship, and it was, it, it was the week that Jamar Chase, had like a gazillion receiving yards and five touchdown passes. Oh, tell me you had him. No, I ah! went up again. And, and, and wait, so as you know, I play in 12 fantasy football yes. leagues. I made it to the championship. I made it to the playoff slash, slash championship in like five or six of them. All right. And, and in some insane way, everybody I went up against had Jamar Chase. Shut up. Oh, that's bad luck. That's just oh, bad luck. I was it was just, it was absolutely horrible. So, um, so anyway, yeah, Brandy Chastain, man, she's, uh, she's, she's, she's competitive. This is a competitive league. I'm scared. Feeds. Right. You better, you, man, yeah, you no. got to bring your A game, man. You got to bring your A game. I literally am just trying to finish the season. Like, I think my, I named my team just finish. Like, that's really my goal. Just finish the season, Beats. Just don't give up, even if you're in the worst, worst, worst possible position. Give me one line of advice for that league, if you could. Oh, wow. Right, it's um, impossible. Just, you know, I, I always, I always tell people like there's, there, okay, there's, there's three areas to winning your fantasy football league, mm -hmm. right? One is prepare for your draft. Know, know your, know your rules, know your scoring system. Oh, dear. Prepare properly for your draft. That's number one. Okay. Darty don't number, know that. Go on. Number, number two is. Be <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need okay. cliff notes of All that. Right, so, uh, <laughs> oh, for one. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. <laughs> Number two, number two is, um, you know, be active and attractive. What does that mean? Like be aggressive in free agency, oh, like crap. make okay. sure on Tuesday night, you've got your ad drops in. Oh, no. 
Make, you know, try, take a look around your league, see who is, um, who's suffering, who's, who's weak at certain positions you might be strong at and, and, and start Hmm. offering trades. Oh, you know, see, so, that goes against my theory. I always avoid trades because I refuse well, to give anybody any help. Interesting. <laughs> I did that wrong. Okay. But, if, yeah, <laughs> no, but you want to, you, it's about you getting right, 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 right. I but feel you like, want, okay. You want to, you want to try to take advantage of uh, somebody else's team who they're lacking in a certain area or a okay. certain position. This and then sense. last but not least, last but not least is, you know, know your matchups, right? Okay. Like, like so that you can make, a really wise decision in regard to who you start and who you sit each week. Those are the three key areas of winning your league for sure. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. I think, I think finishing is really, it's a high goal for me, but I'm going to do it because I don't want to be like the worst person in the whole league and I will be, but at least do it with some panache. No, I will. I'm just, I'm also trying the other league. Just, you know, I feel like I got screwed last year because I had the same score and then somebody else made the playoffs and I just blamed it on sexism because that's what we do now. Uh, And it's, yeah. So that league, I have a team called Lamar, you know, and I like that and I'm very proud of it. I even did the logo, the more you know, but I just, yeah. So I feel good about that. I don't have one for them. I got to come up with an avatar. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, uh, we're going to attempt this. Again, Anita's already tried to explain this to me numerous times privately, but we're going to try again publicly. Betting 101 with Anita Marks. <laughs> we're back. So for me, betting and gambling when it comes to sports, like I can just guess a team that will win the championship. That's easy, right? I, that's super easy. But when it comes to plus and minus and numbers, I it's another language to me. And so we've got a list of bets here, potential bets. I really want to ask you, okay, the first one is highest scoring game in week one, and it's got a list of pluses and minuses, actually just pluses. What am I looking at and what do I do? Okay, so a a few things. (laughs) You're 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 adorable. It's it's like, it's like Swahili. I don't know what I'm looking at. And just, but but just so you know, like, you know, and and you lived here in in New York. Yeah. You went to dinner with with me and and our plethora of our gathering girls that we would go with. We're, We're intelligent women. We're women who went to Ivy League school. I didn't. I, like I went to University so. of Sun and Flynn in Tampa. I barely right? finished college, but yes, everyone but, else was um, smarter. It's it's <laughs> it's if if you don't if you're not in this space if you if you don't talk this language right. it's hard to it's hard to comprehend. It doesn't mean that you're ignorant or you're not intelligent. It's, it's another hard. language. It's it's a different language. Yeah. So okay. Okay. So for so for example. Um, you know, again, let's go back. Carolina, Baker Mayfield, right? Yep. Um, they are now favored by two and a half, which okay. means that when the game starts, Carolina against Cleveland, um, Carolina's already down two and a half points, which means Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns are already up two and a half points. Okay. So now fast forward to the end of the game. Mm-hmm. The, the Carolina Panthers have to win by a field goal. Okay. In, in that makes order, sense to me. In order for you to win your bet. Okay. And that would okay. read as what? Carolina's net minus two so and a half? So Carolina's minus two and a half. That's, so that's what the okay. line is right now. So that means that Carolina has to win by a field goal in order for you to win that bet. Okay. okay. So that's for, so that's first. So those are lines. That's, okay. Yeah. That's the point. Now, okay. <laughs> here are odds. So you're talking about highest scoring game in week one. Okay. Yeah. Chiefs, Cardinals, Raiders, Chargers, Bucks, Cowboys, Eagles, Lions. Now what you're seeing here in regard to plus 450 plus 475, yeah. seven to one, eight to one. What this means is for every dollar. So, so if, if it's plus 100, for example, for every dollar you put down, you win a hundred dollars. Ah, huh. okay. 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 That's easy. So, right. So, like um, so. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so then it's Steelers at Bengals is plus fourteen hundred. That's the largest one on there. So that means I'm, I'm, so. Okay, so I'm I'm sorry. So so for example, so so highest scoring game. I'm looking at the best odds. I think the best odds are the Bucks and the Cowboys, right? Hmm. Bright lights, big stage. What is it? The Sunday Monday night game, right? It's Kinda seven sexy, to one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you're putting, so you're going to put down a hundred dollars to win seven hundred dollars. Okay. Understand? That makes sense. Yep, so if yep. you, but if you think it's the Chiefs and the Cardinals, you're putting $100 down to win $450. If you think it's the Raiders and the Chargers, you're putting $100 down to win $475. Do so by this, by this list, people think Steelers and Bengals will be a low-scoring game. It's not that they think it'll be a low-scoring game. 
but the probability, the probability and the chance of it being the highest scoring game of the week hmm. is not likely. Okay. So that's why the that. odds you're getting are plus 1,400. Okay. Those are Understand? the fun ones. Like when people so, go nuts in Vegas. You're like, oh my God, how did you figure oh, that out? Yeah, and okay. if I hit that, oh. Yeah, exactly. Know, mom, okay. mama's, mama's buying a, a, a new <laughs> pair of shoes, as I like to say. So, so but, but looking at this, if you're asking me what I would play, highest scoring game in week one, obviously there's a reason why the Chiefs and the Cardinals are favored at plus 450, right? Like right. two very explosive offenses. I get that. Yes. But where I find value in where you could win and win handsomely, I think is with the Bucks and the Cowboys. It's seven to okay. one. I, I kind of, I like that. I also like the Eagles and the Lions at eight to one. I think a lot of people are sleeping on the Lions right now. Thank you. So, yeah. So, so those, so, you know, I, I look around those odds uh, more than I like that because it's middle of the pack, but it's still a nice payoff if yeah. it were to hit. So I'm okay with that. And then it becomes simple yes or no bets with teams and making the playoffs. Now this is where this is where this is like the advanced class. So let's just jump down because I want one that has a little bit of both. Um, and that's like a fun team. All right. Do the Raiders make the playoffs? Yes, plus 150. No, minus 195. What did I just say? So I don't believe the Raiders are going to make the playoffs. Okay. So you're saying no. But, but, but I'm not going to lay $195 to win $100 to win that bet. That's the like juice bad. is, it's called juice. Yeah. The juice is too much for me. I don't want it. But you know what I am going to play, Beads? I'm going to play that all four teams in that AFC West division make it to the playoffs at Jeez. 11 to 1. At 11 to 1. You know why? Okay. I think the Chargers win the division. I think Kansas City absolutely gets in, right? I think Denver gets in with Russell Wilson there now. And if, and if, these four teams beat hmm. up on one another, like because you know, obviously, as you know, they play each other uh, each other twice. Yeah. If these four teams beat up on one another, and then and then beat up on all the teams that they play outside of the division, they can all four go to the playoffs, and I can get that at eleven to one. That's awesome. So I'd rather play that, okay, where I'm laying a dollar right to win eleven dollars. I'd rather play yeah. that. Then minus one ninety five. That doesn't seem I, fun if at I all. I think the other three teams are going to make it to the postseason. I have a dumb question. I don't ever want to play minuses. So why do people do that? That's smart. I, I like, don't like. Why play, are they the other? I, I have I have a range. I'll play minus one ten if I really love a bet. I'll play at minus one twenty five, minus one thirty. I don't I don't I don't like to go any lower than that. Yeah. And a lot of time. A lot of times, if I'm looking at a bet that I absolutely love that I feel like ninety five percent chance is going to hit. What I'll do is I'll parlay it with something else. Oh God! Yeah, now it's now it's getting complicated. <laughs> that means, <laughs> but I, that's where that's those are the stories that come out of Vegas mostly that we hear about, right? Like you just hit a six team parlay, parlay. That is like three million dollars or whatever the heck. It, but you have to get everything. So it's, everything it's, everything has to hit. So there's parlay there's parlays. Where so for example, we're, I'm looking at this list of teams that you sit yeah. in regard to make the playoffs or not, right? So I do believe the Steelers are going to make the playoffs. I think people are sleep, sleeping on Mitchell Trubisky. I think everything I hear from Buffalo that where he was as a backup to Josh Allen last year, coaches loved him. Okay. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if if the Giants' ownership wasn't behind. Giving Daniel Jones this last ditch opportunity to prove oh, his dear. work to the organization. I, I think Mitchell Trubisky may be here with Brian Dable starting for the Giants, but obviously that's not the case. He's given right. an opportunity to start in Pittsburgh. I do believe that he starts in Pittsburgh and I, and I think he balls out. So I've got, I've got, I've got the Steelers making the playoffs and, and you could get that at plus 350. I think the Saints win the division. By the way, I think I, I'm I'm fading I'm fading the Bucks. The okay. offensive line, Tom Brady, no Gronk. I'm fading the Bucks. So I'm 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 trying to find like, um. So okay, so uh, so the Dolphins I don't think make the playoffs, and let's okay. just say the Raiders. Maybe you feel like the Raiders don't make the playoffs. So now I'm gonna parlay those two, which will take me above the minus one ninety five and the minus one seventy five. 
for right. both those teams not make. So now it's putting me in plus money category or like at least money. even money category in both those teams have to not make it to the postseason right. in order for me to win that bet. Okay. Two questions. Have you ever had like, cause you, you are a gambler. Like you've been doing this for how long? So, or you like so when say? I was, when I was, when I was, when I was a little <laughs> child, uh, my grandfather, my grandfather was a huge gambler and I used to watch football with him on Sundays. And so when I was about seven, eight years old, my grandfather had one of those yellow legal pads yes. with all his bets on them. And he'd have me call in his bookie and I Perfect. would place all his butt. So like, I know this, this this jargon. I know this language since I was a kid, right? Yeah. Parlays, teasers, and then and then there's also there's buying points. No, we're so, not there yet. We're not. I don't okay. know what that means. I've okay. heard of it. I have heard it said, but that's when my brain shuts off and thinks about something okay. else. Like, right. <laughs> wait. So have you ever had? Is there a year? I mean, I don't know if you do it by seasons or years that you remember that stands out because you had a really great one or a really bad one. It's, it's a great it question. It, no, it's it's a great question because people, you know, it's it's people think like, you know, if, if you gamble and you gamble professionally, quote unquote professionally, or I, I handicap for ESPN and the Daily Wager show, right? That you know, we need to be right one hundred percent of the time, <laughs> right? If, That'd be nice. Listen, the 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 people out there that are setting these lines, the odds makers, are the smartest mm-hmm. people on the planet. Like, there's a reason why there's a, yeah. there's a reason why you don't normally win. So if you have somebody who's handicapping, who comes in at like 56 or 58% on the hmm. season, you're winning. That is you. But but the public out there thinks you need to be like, you know, 75% right or yeah. 80% right. No, it doesn't work that way. If you're anywhere between 56 to 58% right on the season when it's all said and done, then, you know, then, then, then you're, you're winning. So you're simply winning. put, you're winning more than you're losing. And that's really you're winning just... more than you. Yeah, you're winning more than you're losing. But I know, worry sometimes and, and then, that if and then I a start, lot of it, also a, a lot of it again, you know, depends on you know on the odds and you know you know are you are you betting more plus money? Are you betting more minus money? So um, oh man, never doing minus. I've already just established that as my new rule. It's when smart. I start, this, I like it. I yeah, like it. Staying away. I like it's it. too complicated. I don't want to think about it. I'd like to bet that something happens with Tom Brady that he doesn't finish the season. Is that a prop bet that exists out there? There, I don't believe. Let's that'd find be it. Pretty morbid. I want it. no, not because he's not, be- not going to die. <laughs> like, like, no, well, it's like, geez, you know, beans. He is forty six. You know, I mean, he's got yeah, shit going what on. What are you saying? I'm forty six. You know, I hope I don't die this like, year. I got shit going on. Okay, we I'm all saying got that shit, shit is going to do something to keep him out, and that I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I'd like to bet on it. One thousand dollars. Let me know um, where I can do that. Well, here you have you have Tom Brady over under fifty four. Oh. Almost the yards. 5,500 5, regular season passing. I love the under there. I'll take the I under love, there. I love the under. <laughs> oh, it's obviously the under. He's not going to get to that. Okay. Um, that's what. That's a bet I could do. Oh, 55 yeah, and one. a half regular season passing touchdowns. That seems take high. The under there, yep, take the I, under there as well. Take, yeah, oh, listen. plus 1,800? Put me down. His, <laughs> I'm in on that. His, his offensive line is is gone. Straight garbage. I mean, they just put his center... His, they just... I, whether it was today or yesterday, his center is out for the season. There's not even him like possibly coming back for the postseason. Like he's By the way, out. that's not even the shit he was referring to. This is extra shit that he's got to deal with. He's got personal <laughs> shit and professional shit. That's why I'm saying right. no way he reaches those numbers. Um, okay, we're taking a quick break. Paige has prepared something for us in the C block. It's Ooh. right up our alley. I know it is. We'll be okay. back. <laughs> We are wrapping things up, but these are these are just my favorite. I like doing them on podcasts. I like doing them in real life. They're just fun. It's a would you rather two questions. The first, <clears throat> would you rather be able to talk to dogs and have them understand you, but you can't understand them, or be able to understand what dogs say, but they can't understand you? Oh, that's tough. Hold on. Let me think. I talk to you. You know. Oh, okay. I got it. <laughs> Do you want me to go first? Yeah, of course. Yes. Stop thinking about it. I would love to know what my dogs are feeling oh, yes. and thinking and saying because there's so many times <laughs> I just like, if they're not feeling like it, it pains me, right? Tell me not. Like it pains yes. me sometimes. You know, they're not feeling well. And all you want to be is like, what's wrong? 
Tell me yeah, what's wrong. Tell me what how hurts. Can I, how can I help you? I know. How can I help you? So I would love to know what my dogs are feeling, thinking. I would yep. love for them to be able to communicate to me more than me communicate. Because I can, there's so many ways I can communicate to them. I was going to say. I want to know what they're thinking. Because I do the, and you're a big dog person. I'm a big dog person. I have entire conversations with dogs. Like I speak for them and then I speak back to myself for them. And I think that's 100% normal. So you're right. I think they're all, they already understand us. They read our vibes. They can read our energy. Like they, they, we are communicating, but there have been, I don't know, infinite times I've looked at my dogs and thought I would give up five years of my life to just have 24 hour period where they could talk to me and just like hang out and just, it would be such a dream. <laughs> it's like it's bucket list. That, I mean, that, that, act, that actually might be a better question, Beads. Give how up some many time. Years, how many years off your life would you give yeah. to be able to know, hear, understand <sighs> what your dogs are thinking and what they're feeling? How many I mean, years? I'm telling you. I mean, assuming I live a hundred years, of course, that's, that's what we're basing it on. <laughs> it's like, that's it. This next question is, it's so you, it's so you, uh -oh. um, I actually really like it. I had to think about this. Would you rather have the same three wines for the rest of your life or never be able to have the same wine twice? Ooh. You're, you're giving me the option to have three, just three yeah. wines for the rest of my life. Yep. Or, or drink whatever ooh. you want, but you can never repeat a bottle. This is so good. I know. I think this one's hard. You know I've, what? Oof. You know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to go variety. You know why? Okay. It, ne it never, it never ceases to amaze me. I fall in love with a certain <laughs> wine, whether it's a Cote de Rhone or. Um, yeah. It's, uh, Regions. Like, re like I fall, like right now I'm all into France right now. Like fancy. I fall in love with a region or I fall <laughs> in love with a wine and then it never, like, like I'll stumble upon something else. I'll, and I just, you know, each and every year is different. The crops yeah, are different because the weather is different and the varietals are different. So I'm with you on that. You're, all, you're always going to find something magnificent. Right? Like I'll be bummed if I read, you know, you find perfect bottles of wine. You're like, I want to do it again. I'll be bummed that I won't be able to do that. But I think the limitless possibilities far outweighs that. I'm with you on that. And also I'm never in the mood for the exact same wine. So for me, it's like, I don't know. That's tough. Like, I don't even like rosé. So knock that out. But it's r between reds and white. Hmm. Yeah. I, I want do, as many. Who doesn't like rosé? I don't like rosé. Especially in the summer by I pool. know. I hate it. I, Why? I have tried so who many times. I'm like, that? sure. I don't know. Every time I go out, I'm like, they're like, you want to do a rosé? I'm like, not really. But then they do it anyways. And so then I'll try it. I'm like, yep, still don't like it. And I've tried dry, sweet, sparkly, but I don't know. There's something so, about it. It just doesn't matter. So what is, what, is your what is your favorite one? Like, wh what is like your... I, be, I like big red blends. I like okay. a big cab. I like, I mean, I'm, if I had to only have one, it would be red forever. Because that's just also limitless possibilities. Obviously. But yeah, it's, um, I know, I got to try the wine that you, yeah, I'm going to try the wine that you sent. Because I still haven't. Contrary to public opinion, I don't really drink a lot. So for me to open up a bottle of wine, like at home, it's a big deal. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's uh, lame. So so, so for folks that are, are watching, um, I sent beads a case of yes. uh, this, this great uh, company I stumbled upon, you know, as we get older, <clears throat> you know, we want to, we need to start watching our weight and what we consume, right? Yep. A little bit better. And so it's called Scout and Seller and what they do, it's uh, beads. This is a great company. Yeah. Um, former attorney in San Francisco would come home at night and we all sometimes, right? We want a bottle of wine at night. Yeah, but, but then we wake alone. up the next morning and we feel like shit. And so yep. she's like, she's like, this is always wrong. Like, <laughs> like I, I should be able to come home at night, have a bottle of wine and then go to court the next day and not feel like crap. And so Fair. long story short, she now goes and, and uh, around the country and they manufacture wine God. from very mom and pop vineyards who don't use pesticides, Brilliant. who don't use added sugar. That's and the part, so, that's the uh, thing. so it's called, it's called Scout and Cellar. And, and I just, I love it. It's, you know, a lot less calories. Um, Perfect. again, no pesticides. It's a healthier wine, especially for women out there trying to get pregnant. Oh, um, you know, and also trying, you know, not to put on that extra weight. <laughs> and, it, and I always tell people it's a great wine to, to drink seven days a week, 
but it's even better wine to drink, let's say Sunday on school nights, right? right? Sunday through Thursday, where you can have a half a bottle and you can have a bottle, you wake up the next morning and you don't feel bad. By the way, that's so, only two to four glasses, ladies and gentlemen, don't get weirded out. <laughs> If it's a good wine, four glasses goes fast. That's that's the problem. No, I'm I'm excited about it. And you're right. It's I I envy people who take detours on their professional paths and then find something passion project that turns into a thing. Like I envy that. I still haven't found mine yet. Um, Anita, this has taken way too long to do. I am. I miss. I miss you. We miss you here so much in New York. Well, you, you need to you need to come back. You need to visit. I know. Us. I do need to come back. I do miss a lot. You know, as soon as the summer part's over, because it's still a little bit, eh. But we're going to do it. And we have our league this year. So we're definitely going to be in contact a lot more than we have been. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, I will open that wine. I swear on everything. I swear. <laughs> Love you, girl.